All right. This is one of those where it's the next six items. Again, everything is going to apply. This is where I told you that reading is going to be very, very important. Okay. So now we've got an 84 year old male. Okay. So we've got, and look at this. This is exactly what you're going to see. And this is probably on an intake, right? When you see a patient for the first time, you're going to get general neuro, palm, cardio. You're going to do a full head to toe, right? So now we've got a client reports a one long history of fatigue and dyspnea that has worsened. One month long history of fatigue and dyspnea that has worsened. Is una unable to lie flat, sleeps in a chair at night. Medical history includes MI, chronic heart failure, COPD, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, was di uh, diagnosed with BPH eight months ago. Client is adherent with prescribed medications. Uh, client reports frequent consumption of donuts, hamburger, steak, and fried chicken. BMI is elevated. Client reports six, point, uh, six pound uh, weight gain in one week. What is happening here? Tell me what's just happened and tell me how we've learned it. Heart failure, 100%. Heart failure, weight gain, dyspnea, trouble lying down, right? With, with all the medical history. So now we go into neuro. Neuro is ANO times three, palm, vital signs, respiratory rate 22, SpO2 is 88 on room air. Was freaking out about that. Labored breathing, crackles, uh oh, fluid in the lungs, pink tinge frothy sputum, uh, 40 year history of smoking, vital signs 98.8, pulse is 98, blood pressure 113. We've got an S3. So this is pointing by uh, three plus bilateral lower extremity edema. So, what type of uh, heart failure is this? Yeah, this is complete heart failure. And look, remember what I told you about the age, 84. I told you when they get older, that right will turn into left. Now you got complete heart failure or that left will turn into right. So now comes the highlighting, okay? It says find five findings that require further investigation, okay? Okay, so now unable to lie flat and sleep in a chair at night. Okay, that's a finding that's in, in, that we should investigate. Um, six pound weight gain. How about the oxygen level, right? And then three plus bilateral edema, crackles in the lungs. So what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. S3. Well, we already found we already found five. They'll give you the options to highlight. So you just gotta kind of go through and, and pick them out. But yeah, those are the five that I would choose as further investigation. So again, unable to sleep at night or lie flat, six pound weight gain, oxygen is low, crackles on lungs, bilateral edema, right? So these are the ones that I guess we could choose that, but which one would we go with? Increase your hesitancy, urgency. Mm. Hold on, findings to further investigate. Okay, you could go with depressed, that's an option. You could go with increase your hesitancy and urgency, but let's think about this. The S3 is not, so it'll give you a choice to highlight. So I'm, I'm clicking on S3, it won't let me highlight it. So if you kind of click around, it'll let you choose. So they've given us seven options, okay? You've given us seven options. So, but let's think about this. The problem here is what? This individual has heart failure, right? So is the increased urine hesitancy and urgency regarding heart failure or is that regarding the BPH? It's regarding the BPH, right? Is depressed and lonely have anything to do with heart failure? He's 84 years old, right? So everything that I've chosen out of these five, I've chosen to deal with heart failure. But yeah, you can see that there are other options that you can, cho you can choose. But again, you want to relate it to what we're diagnosing, right? We want to relate it to the situation. 
So yeah, is that something I'm going to be concerned about? Of course. Okay, here we go. So now, this is where I told you knowing differential diagnoses is so important. So we know, how about this? Do we know chronic heart failure? Yeah. Do we know COPD? Yeah. So now let's choose chronic heart failure, fatigue. Yeah. How about COPD fatigue? Dyspnea, both. S3, chronic heart failure. Rapid weight gain, chronic heart failure. Pink frothy sputum, heart failure, and barrel shaped chest. So you see, all we're doing is signs and symptoms. It's a select all that apply in front of you. It's a, literally, it's a select all that apply. Find me the signs and symptoms of chronic heart failure. Okay, I know that. Oh, just because they put it next to COPD, I'm supposed to freak out now? No, because I know the signs and symptoms of COPD. Right? Now, we've gone through how many? Two of them, right? Let's go keep going. All right. So now we're gonna do that drop down. We should see that this person has what happening right now? Obstructive sleep apnea? Well, I didn't hear anything about snoring or, or desatting while sleeping. Heart failure exacerbation? Yeah, we just talked about heart failure. And then COPD exacerbation? Heart, oops, heart failure. And it's evidenced by, so now I'm telling you, this is a freebie question. You just diagnosed heart failure. And what's going to give it the, give me that? High BMI, orthopnea, or history of smoking? I would probably go with orthopnea, right? Because the evidence can a history of smoking cause it? Sure. High BMI, okay, he has a high BMI, but what's telling me that this is heart failure? Orthopnea, yeah. What do you think? How are we feeling? This is all stuff we've learned. All this content we've learned. Now, we're gonna go, a healthcare provider has confirmed that the client is experiencing exacerbation heart failure. Wow, we knew that from the first question. For each potential prescription, click to specify the prescription is expected for the client or unexpected. So now we're, now we're doing what? We're managing them. Now we're, at, we're managing them, right? So do we tell them to do daily weights? Did we learn that? Sure did. How about giving them furosemide? Did we learn about that? Yeah. How about compression stockings? Yes, for the peripheral edema. Encourage the client to limit mobility? No, that's needs. That's needs. Encourage increased oral fluid intake. No, not right now. Not right now, right? Because they're in fluid overload. They're in fluid overload. Let's get the fluid off. All right, four, we got two more. Select all that apply. So now, which of the following statements indicate correct understanding of teaching? Wait a minute, is this one of the five types of questions? Yeah, it is. So I will weigh myself once a week. Once a week? No, I will notify my healthcare provider if I develop muscle cramps. Hello, we learned this, diuretics, potassium, potassium, potassium. I will check my blood pressure before each dose of Carvedilol. Yes. I should take my furosemide at bedtime. Ironically enough, I joke about this all the time. And I say, give it to them at bedtime if they piss you off. So, <laughs> so you take it in the morning, right? And I'm going to join cardiac rehab program. Wait a minute. Exercise? Where did we learn all of this? In cardio. We learned it in cardio. 
Because you remember when we started with coronary artery disease and we worked our way all the way, all the way down to discharge. That's it. All right, last one. All right, this is drag and drop. So you got five word choices, only three of them are going to be filling in the blank. The nurse recognizes that furosemide was effective by what? Two plus uh, peripheral edema? Two plus, yeah, because it went down, right? I would say so. So increased urine output, yes, because we're getting them to diuresis. We said the two plus peripheral edema, correct? Cholesterol being affected by furosemide? No. Reduced urine hesitancy? Or reduced work of breathing? What do you think? We feeling good with these? Let's go. This is it. Let's see how we did. Three out of three. Let's see how we did on the entire thing. Three out of three on that one. Five out of five on that one. Two out of two on that one. Eight out of eight on that one. And five out of five on that one. Come on. And we did every single type of question. Every single type. And nothing in here that I taught you, and, and nothing in here, and I've never seen these questions, by the way. Some of the old, old questions, I'm like familiar with them because I teach them so, so much. This is the first time I'm seeing this question. First time. I've never seen this question and we did every single type and we did not miss one single point. You just have to have the confidence and the content, that's it. That's all it takes. So those of you that are going into um, Next Gen, don't be intimidated because I've taught you everything. I've taught you everything. 